welcome to my video lecture series on harmonic distortions. This is video 13 or the third video in the segment on Epsley's contribution to harmonic distortion calculations. Today we're going to talk about uh, the expansion of frequency terms using Pascal's triangle. How he came up with this, I don't know, but it all sort of falls into place. And I'm always grateful for folks that have this kind of insight. So we're here, third one, and then we'll go into the second and I'll work through the fourth and the sixth harmonic for you. Uh, so I'm showing you all the, the work he didn't include because when you're, you're doing a, a doctorate paper, you're just trying to keep it concise because paper in 1933 was rather much a premium. So you edit and be very concise, hit the major points, get your idea out there and move on. Leave the work for everybody else me <laughs> it, and it's good so we we talked about in the last video how we've taken the general form of the equation and we've done our frequency expansion terms with the equation on mid screen and i've done that in videos five through ten we've done the frequency expansion terms using equally spaced time intervals now we're going to go into equally spaced uh, grid voltage increments so we've kind of talked uh, about the cosine theta part of this equation. I'm using this as an illustration because it's a linear transformation. We're going to go into K more this. So if you're unfamiliar with Blaise Pascal, he was a French mathematician, uh, inventor, physicist, Catholic theo theologian, uh, child prodigy. So back before the you know video games, things like that, your home, your board, showing so many twigs and rocks you can play with. What do you do next? Well, you, I guess you work on math. I guess. <laughs> Glad he did too. So you're looking at pyramid here and he just he works it out. So, you know, go out on the internet, search it out. There's a lot of neat geeky things about Pascal's triangle. And in fact, if you knew more about Pascal's triangle, then you'll understand when you get into discrete Fourier transforms and they discuss uh, convolutions, go back to Pascal's triangle, you'll get a better understanding what that means. We're not going to get into this video. So, we start with the general form, get the middle form, we're down here to this bottom form. Now what we want to do is go through and look at the frequency expansion using that form of the equation. But in this case, what we're going to do, what he also did, didn't show his work, but what he did, was we're going to drop the delta dg term. For now, it, it, it's ubiquitous to the equation, and there's no point, point in carrying through a term that we're not going to, that doesn't add any value, doesn't change anything as we do the expansion terms it's just going to ride along so to keep the work a little bit simpler we're going to drop that term for now just ignore it but what we want to know is something about the term k which he introduced vg over delta vg uh, the peak voltage again if you have three volt peak to peak the peak voltage would be one and a half volts divided by if you have four segments it'd be uh, three quarters of a volt or k is going to equal two but how does k change with the frequency terms so that's all we're going to look at here is k uh, with respect to the expansion terms of sines of sine omega t we're going to take a shortcut here because we know he says we he done the expansion terms he says this led him to the Pascal triangle. I'm sure the first time he worked it out, it wasn't that intuitively obvious, but he probably had a fair indication. This looks really familiar here. If I could just, oh yeah, you know, so he works it out. So what we're going to do, we're going to cheat a little bit using power formulas, because I'm not going to work it all out by hand. So we substitute the power formulas for each of these terms uh, this is what we're going to get here on the right. So that part's done. This is as far as he takes it, except that he reorganizes the terms. He says, let's reorganize the terms by harmonic components. Something we, I've done time and time again in videos 5 through 10. 
you do the expansion and you regroup things because you know sine omega t that's the fundamental frequency cosine 2 omega t that is your second order harmonic these are the terms for it. and he goes look at this so I, some is beginning to look very familiar so here's i mean which is I, a zero plus his other term this term here happens to be the dc rectification current and you add in your bias current you get i mean but look at this okay so k k to the two three four five six k to the two three four five six k to the four you get the idea look at this way one three ten one three ten one four fifteen one five one six wow okay this looks familiar well let's look at pascal triangle because the first thing I want to work this out and go you know this looks uh, kind of like a Koleski matrix decomposition which is why Pascal answers a lot of questions out there in the frequency domain okay it puts the answer into a matrix decomposition for you is what it is so when, if you're going to calculate harmonic coefficients it goes from 1 omega t to 10 omega t you can continue on Here's I mean. This is what you need to know. On the other side of calculating a Pascal's triangle is zero omega t. And this is as far as this goes. Okay? I'm not going to go into more details. So I'm going to leave it there. We're also going to ignore column L here. So here's a Pascal number. This is how it's calculated. They've known about this since Pascal. It's, it's a series. That's the reason... Taylor series can be used. It's a series. Pascal's is a series, a geometric series that we can use to answer a lot of questions about frequency calculations and harmonics and intermodular uh, distortion characteristics and feedback circuits. This is ground zero. Okay? This is how you calculate. So if n is zero, and you're looking for a six harmonic, then what you have is uh, six factorial over zero factorial, which is one over five factorial, six minus, oh, sorry, six minus zero would be six, or six factorial or six factorial, you're going to get one. And then if you plug in n is equal to one, you'll get six, 15, 20, 15, six, one. You can't go any further, it becomes invalid. We do calculate a, a middle column. That's for another purpose. You can also look at it this way. If you were to add the previous column, the columns on the previous row up, 1 plus 4 is 5, uh, 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10. You can look at it that way, but this is the equation. This equation, the Pascal number, is what um, Epsilon was focused on. He goes, that is a series. Taylor's a series. There's got to be something we can do with that. He's, he's right. So this column, if we were to add up all the numbers in the row, that would be what you get here. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. If I take their harmonic, minus 1 raised 2 to that power, you would get this. So for 0, it's going to be 1. So 1, uh, 2 to the 0 power is going to be 1, and this is the square term. They're the same. Pascal's triangle. Here's how I got blocked out to look at the numbers, the Pascal numbers, up to a tenth order with a Pascal's triangle. And he was looking at this, and he goes, I work it out here for 9, with, you know, R is equal to 9. 9 to mark N being this, is, you can do this. Of course, you can go research this other places. But he says, Here's what he mentions in the paper. He goes, actually, each of these terms is the Pascal number times a coefficient, which we worked out in videos uh, 5 to 10. We, we've always solved for coefficients through the process of elimination methodology. So you have to find, if, if you knew what the coefficient is, and we know k, because k is the number of points. 
if uh, you're looking at five points, so you can have four segments, it'd be k to the, you know, r, and, and that's going to be um, the order of the harmonic, and you divide that by 2 to r minus 1. He said, when you do that, I get this term. So we, he can calculate 2, 8, 32, 4, 8, 4, 8, 32. He goes, this is that general format. He goes, so here's the easy part. We could go back to the previous series and work out the frequency expansion using the term v, minus VB plus uh, V peak sine omega T. And as you saw and I demonstrated, it can go on and on and on and on. But what if we can do that in your head? Yeah, that's good. So you can. You got Pascal's triangle. It's easy. Given what he's told you, this is easy. Because this term here is actually this column. 1, 3, 10, 35. 1, 3, 10, 35. The next one would be 126. For the Pascal number. This number, he's giving you the formula for. And this, he's giving you the formula the fundamental frequency is this first column, 1, 3, 10, 35, 1, 3, 10, 35, 2 omega t, 1, 4, 15, 1, 4, 15, 56. So the term for the seventh harmonic is going to be 56. Now then the green are the seventh harmonic. You would stop there. If you wanted to work out the eighth harmonic, it would be the green plus y highlighted in red. So when we look look across here, so for six harmonic, one eight, six harmonic, one eight. If you were going to go to the tenth, you would have to go to forty five. Okay. Another thing about this, if when we look down across the columns, they are actually the diagonals. These are all one terms. This is 1, 3, we skip this column here, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 4, 5, 6, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3, 10, 15, 21, 28, 3, 10, 15, 21, 28, these are the diagonals. Just that easy. We were done with the frequency expansion terms. So he said, if we wanted to calculate the fourth order harmonic, then it's a simply matter if we know now from what we've done here. Here is uh, the fundamental. Here's the fourth, and we can do that division. And you've got the fourth order harmonic. All you have to do now is figure out what those coefficients are, and I'm going to do that in in the upcoming videos. It doesn't solve for that. It just gives you, if you know what the coefficients are, a4, a6, a8, so on and so forth, you can quickly calculate the harmonic, the percent, time, you know, times 100, you get a percent harmonic. So he says here is, if you, if you did this for the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth harmonic, it takes on the general format. Wait, I, I copied from his paper. So from the proceedings, of, um, let me get the thing right. So the Proceedings of the Institute of Radio Engineers from 1933, when he published, this is what he published. So I, I didn't change anything. I want you to see this is what he has. For, for any percentage of the rth harmonic, you can plug it in here and calculate the percent harmonic. You, your problem is you have to figure out what the coefficient, this a prime r plus 2, a prime r plus 4 is. You still have to solve for that. But if you can solve for the, for the coefficient, you can easily calculate the harmonic. So there is a geometric progression. This is a series. It's, in, in other words, you can look at this video and say, is there proof that uh, the harmonics are a geometric progression a geometric series? Yes, they are. They answer to Pascal's triangle, which is a series much like a Taylor series. Now then, he leaves you with one final thought. He says, for a resistive coupled tube, 
you, of course, you always calculate harmonics along the AC load line, the dynamic load line, if you use terminology back from the 30s and 40s, is the dynamic load line. He says that's, you'll have greater uh, accuracies always obtainable when you do that than when you have a transformer coupled tube. And the reason for that is twofold. Generally, when you're doing preamps here, the, it, almost independent of frequency, uh, the, the capacitor here adds very little and you can do that calculation, but it's not gonna change uh, the value actually that you're gonna get for the RL loading the tube. And because of that, the black line here does not change. Once you've done that dynamic load line calculation, it does not change through the frequency span. Little, little, little. If you really wanted to do the RC calculation, it's going to change. Not worth the effort. On a transformer coupled, we have discussed this in previous videos. As the, especially on output transformer, as the frequency changes through the speaker, the speaker then reflects back through the output transformer a load on the plate, and that swings a lot. And when I did my inductive load line series, this ellipse changes a lot. And when it changes this load line, which is represented in red, that is going to have a swing to it. So he says, really for the preamp, for the resistive loading tubes, once you've done the calculation, you're pretty much done. But for a transformer loaded one, thankfully we have uh, automation and PCs and we can write programs to do this, which was not available to him. We can calculate the dynamic load path operation. We can calculate this load line and we can look at the harmonic distortion uh, for a from frequencies going from you know say a thousand hertz or a hundred hertz on up to whatever you want and we can watch it swing we can look at that change and then in a future video I will show you the graphs for changing load which is actually changing the frequency response from say a thousand to five thousand which is fairly common for power tubes back then and still now they analyze from a thousand hertz to 5,000 Hertz and they show you the harmonic distortion as I mentioned in the first segment those curves aren't published much anymore but you can still get them and we can do that calculation here going back to the uh, videos I did for the lips and I will in the future near future do a series on lo calculating load lines especially for a transformer loaded power tube and with that, I'm going to take what we've known now, uh, what we've discussed to point, the, the linear transformation, uh, the, the Pascal frequency uh, expansion, and I'm going to work out the second harmonic. He says this is really a three-point uh, calculation. It's not worth much. It's rough and dirty. He really doesn't like it. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I'll, I'll work it through it because it's a simple enough problem. I'm going to show you uh, how to calculate the way I did in the last segments and, and in this segment and show you that the answer comes out the same. And from there, I'll go into the fourth and sixth harmonic. Thank you for watching.